Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble, and today we're going to be going over how to switch from a two-layer to a four-layer board, which itself is actually a pretty easy task, especially in KiCad 5.0. It's going to change in KiCad 5.1. I will say that up front uh, because I was playing with that the other day. But this is in response to someone asking about this in the last push and shove video. Uh, why would you want to switch to the first place? Why would you want a four-layer board? Well, I use it a lot in my professional life as a consultant. I switch. I pretty much start there because uh, there's better signal integrity, there's more power availability, you're chopping up ground traces, ground planes less, the power planes less. Really, it's just a better method of doing it. Now, it is a little bit more advanced. You don't necessarily need to do it right away, especially if you're using things like the Getting to Blinky uh, tutorial series or if you're doing the uh, Shine on You Crazy KiCad, which is a LED tutorial just for uh, a simple Raspberry Pi header. Both those things, you don't really need need a four layer board. I also should mention it will be more expensive and slower. So a lot of the 24 hour turn services or even the low cost, super low cost services, um, you know, those are all based on two layer boards. So switching to a four layer, you will incur more cost. And that's something, you know, a lot of people getting started want to know about. So let's take a quick look over at a board that I've done in the past. This is actually a board we do for contextual electronics this is the CE header board. And uh, so right now you can see this actually is a good candidate for two layer. I'm able to maintain a, you know, a nice solid ground plane on the back. There's, it's not really broken by too many traces. There are some traces going through the ground plane, but otherwise there's a pretty solid copper ground plane on the backside. And then I'm routing power on the top here. Now, if I wanted to route power differently, say I needed to have a trace to go from pin two to pin 21 here. Uh, well, I probably wouldn't want to have that uh, three volt trace in there. So let's go and delete this trace. And then how are we going to power this whole thing and connect all these pins together? Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually up the layer count. You see over on the right side here, we have a front copper and a back copper. And so what we're going to do is go to setup and we're going to, go to layer setup. And then in here, there's actually a really convenient uh, preset. And we see two layers, players on front and back. So that basically is telling you which, which uh, layers we have available here. We also, we could go and modify the layers directly and actually say how many layers we want to add in here change the board thickness if you want to. Um, but instead, I'm going to just go straight to the four layer parts on front and back. You see it's the same 62 point, uh, well, usually 62.5, I believe, uh, mil. But uh, so 63 mil layer board. Uh, and then we're going to leave everything else the same. The only thing we might change here is change the actual name. Usually I do power. If I'm doing power on the top side, usually I'll actually do ground right underneath the top layer if that is the main signal layer. And then this one will be power. And you see, there's also on the right side here, we could change these to power, mixed, or jumper. We can change it to power, but it doesn't really affect much here. So we can do that just for, just for fun. And uh, at least as far as I understand it, it doesn't change anything. And then everything else we'll just leave here. We also could turn off certain layers if we want to, turn off Eco 1, comments, and drawings. These are basically layers that you usually do not send to the fab. Uh, so it's basically just extra layers. A lot of these other ones, though, you do want to keep the adhesion layer. That's if you're going to have glue on your board for parts hanging upside down. Edge cuts, that's how you do the outline. There's a lot of uh, basically everything else you want to leave default here. So hit OK. You'll see it's redrawing all the layers here. So now we do have these layers available to us. And then like I showed in the past video, basically what we're going to do is draw a ground plane or a power plane in this case. right? So I'm going to click on the corner here. I'm going to say power layer, 3.3 volts. And then I'm just going to click a a circle or sorry a square I know my shapes uh, a square on the corners here double click to finish and what you see is then now on the inner layer right so this is the pink layer we can turn it on and off on the inner layer it's connected pin 24 pin 1 and I believe there's one down here pin 12 so all those are connected on the uh, inner layer and they're unbroken and that's a really nice thing now another thing that you can see is if you switch to a four layer board say you wanted to connect uh, device RX well, let's say we want to go a different direction and connect Oops, device RX. We're going to hit X to start. Click a uh, drawing here. I'm going to hit V to drop a via. I'm going to switch to my other layer. I can either do that up. Uh, I can switch up here and start drawing again on a different layer. Or I can just switch it with uh, my hotkeys, which I've mapped to 1, 2, 3, 4. So I could switch to 1, 2, 3, 4. And that is something I'll show in a future video. So I'll keep it on two. And the nice thing is basically you can go through other traces, go under other, other traces, right? Basically, you see that red trace on the top there. Normally, I wouldn't be able to get past it if I was also on the top layer. In this case, though, I'm actually on an inner layer. And because this is a planar process, I can get through there in a different manner. And that's really the reason you'd want to switch to a different uh, to a four layer board. You can have more complex boards with more inter intricate uh, routing paths between them. 
So I drop a via here, go back to the top layer, and then I can finish. Obviously, I already have that, that other trace there. Uh, and so basically, these, these are you know some of the small reasons you want to do a four-layer board. Like I said, I'm starting there most days because I'm doing very fine pitch parts. I'm doing some stuff with high speed and or RF. And, uh, you know, and once you get into those uh, higher complexity boards, you might want to consider that yourself as well. So that's a quick look at how to switch from a two-layer board to a four-layer board and some of the reasons you might want to do it. Remember, it will be a little bit more expensive and it will be more complex. So if you're just getting started, you probably don't need to do this. But if you want to switch to a four-layer board, that's how you do it. You can learn more about four-layer boards and two-layer boards over at uh, the KiCad forum. That's forum.kicad.info. Or if you can learn how to make your own four-layer board over at contextualelectronics.com or check it out on our forum. You can talk about it more there, forum.contextualelectronics.com. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.